to stage each complex stunt, but determine exactly how much he could allow the two stars to do in the highly dangerous race. It's always a lot less than some actors like to pretend. Uh, no actor can adequately do uh, real stunt work and uh, is seldom allowed to try even. But the guys that know how to do it, that teach you, learn the limits of your capacity and you learn to trust them. However, just before actual filming was to begin, Chuck had second thoughts. Then it crossed my mind one day when we were resting the horses and I said, Jack, you know, I've just gotten to the point where I can drive these suckers. But I said, it's just the one team. I said, we start shooting this next week, and there are going to be eight other teams out there. How about that? I'm not certain I can cut that. And he said, Chuck, you just stay in the chariot. I guarantee you're going to win the damn race. <laughs> but that was probably the most successful physical presentation I've ever learned. It was uh, one of the most exciting periods of my life. Stuntmen are marvelous guys. They have uh, an easy kind of confidence. They don't have to prove anything because they can do it. If everybody in movies could do what he does as well as the stuntmen do what they do, uh, we would have <laughs> films you couldn't believe but the rest of us are struggling with uh, creative and mental and physical inadequacies that uh, don't seem to affect these guys not before and not since 1966 has a special oscar been bestowed upon a stuntman and yakima kunuk was that man of all the silent screen stars buster keaton a trained acrobat was perhaps best prepared to do his own stunt work. His keen timing and coordination undoubtedly accounted for much of his popularity. Today, Buster wouldn't have been allowed to do half of what he did then. If the star is injured and the production is halted, insurance companies usually cover the costly downtime. Nobody wants that to happen. But today, a lot of action stars have to do some pretty difficult stunts themselves to satisfy the demands of a sophisticated audience. And as a result, actors and stunt people develop much closer relationships than in the past. In the film The Presidio, Sean Connery and Mark Harmon play two lawmen in a story that calls for them to do a lot more than just deliver dialogue. Mark's experience as a college quarterback came in very handy when negotiating this realistic chase scene. And clearly, he's doing everything himself. Shot mainly on actual locations, the film is both directed and photographed by Peter Hyams, who relies heavily on veteran stunt coordinator now, Glenn Wilder down, to help bring originality to the sequence. In turn, Mark and his stunt double, Norman Howell, work on who can best sell a shot. I've worked with Norman for quite a while, and, and I, I trust his judgment implicitly. If he tells me he thinks it's difficult and he should handle it alone, I, I let him handle it alone. And, and most times, he'll do it, and then I'll do it. And hopefully that gives the editor an advantage uh, that he might not have in other instances. And, and I don't care about any of it as long as the scene wins. I'm no hero about the stunt part of it, and I'll do whatever I need to do to make it believable for the character, but uh, Norman Howell looks more like me than I look like me, so I let him do the really hard stuff. <laughs> Roll both cameras. And be calm and mark. Action, guys. With fellow stuntman Steve Kelso doubling the heavy, Norman replaces Mark for this brief but risky That's piece of cut. action. Well, Roll camera, please. Ready? Mark then comes in to do the close shot, which still demands exceptional agility and acting ability. 
At 12, Norman Howell was given a part in a John Wayne Western, was immediately drawn to the easygoing nature of the stuntmen, and decided he had to become one of them. And I just started picking up information from all these older stunt guys, Tommy Huff, Terry Leonard. I just started listening. I, I, for 10 years, I never talked. I listened, you know. I can't recall ever being on a set and saying, no, I can't do that, or no, I will not do that. Norman, doubling the star of MacGyver, Richard Dean Anderson, regards the upcoming spectacular stunt as something special in his long list of awesome credits. It didn't faze him that no one had ever done it before. It was exhilarating. I had so much fun doing that because it went so smoothly that I wanted to do it again. The director said, no, we don't need it again. It was great. It's one of the few times when I really wanted to do this kind of thing. Through meeting Billy Burton, I uh, did a job called Octopus, where I doubled James Bond, which was, to me, you know, a highlight. That was difficult to train for because there was an airplane taxiing down the runway, and I had to ride up behind it on a horse and leap ahead of my horse and land on the tail of the uh, beach craft. Come on! Come on! Norman was 25 years old at the time he literally boarded and held on to the aircraft as it lifted off the ground. For the balance of this unique sequence, however, Roger Moore would be doubled by aerial specialist Jake Lombard. It would require four weeks filming at seven to 8,000 feet to get James Bond out of this ultimate cliffhanger predicament. The stunt had never been done before. And while there's a parachute under Jake's jacket, there were many risks entailed by moving about the speeding plane. As we're diving, the wardrobe exploded and inflated with air. And I didn't want to take a chance on deploying the parachute into the torn wardrobe, so I just hung on until it was all over. Of course, then you got to go do it again because the coat looked terrible in camera. During the fight sequence, Jake engages V.J. Worth, doubling heavy in an authentic duel, which was all the more dangerous for having two men performing miles high at 120 miles an hour. B.J. vividly recalls his challenge. In my position, I had to have my back to the wind. And that was the most difficult part to the most uh, trying because sometimes I'd come very near the tail and we had to do it 18 times, I guess, from different angles, different cameras. Uh, and in the end, it worked out okay, but it was sort of tricky. Needless to say, the Bond pictures have brought stunt work to new heights. In Dodge City, a 1939 Western, the classic barroom brawl. A field day for Hollywood stuntmen for whom these huge free-for-alls meant a lot of work. Noticeably absent amongst the chaos is the star Errol Flynn. An unrehearsed punch for a flying object might have done him in. But times have changed. For the film Roadhouse, Patrick Swayze plays a professional bouncer with a talent for kickboxing. Long, complex fight scenes will require his complete participation. No double at all most of the time. Choreographing the action for the many elaborate brawls is Charlie Picciarni, outstanding stunt coordinator of such films as Die Hard. No one throws a punch without his staging it first, both to ensure it's true to the film and safe. He suggests to director Rowdy Harrington what co-star Sam Elliott should do next. You got that, you're going to turn back into it. You can get this if you want, but the old fights are still entertaining. What we try to do now is try and put different types of fights in, uh, in movies. I think fights that fit the characters, you know, more than uh, just doing a fight for the sake of doing a fight. I think it's always interesting to make it fit the character and make the story work. Oh, I love these guys. Half, half my friends are stuntmen. And it's interesting, and they're a real interesting lot because, you know, it's a macho trade, you know? Yet, nine times out of ten, they don't play macho. They don't try to, to act like I'm, bad or I'm the baddest of the bad. They're good people and they're in touch with their vulnerability and their sensitivity. Charlie, he doesn't just go by the numbers and just stick in stuff. He goes from a dynamic and emotional point of view of what emotionally needs to happen in this moment for the movie. 
not just so he can make, put, throw in neat stunts.